Hi, this is Jeff Braylio of Braylio Law Office, and welcome to our LLC Education Series. Uh, this uh, video is discussing your LLC paperwork, so this is what you'll want to watch after you receive the paperwork from our office to better understand it. Um, and before we get started, uh, there's just a few of the, the basics that we need to cover, and that is today's presentation materials are copyrighted. Uh, please don't reproduce them. Uh, they're always available online for free, so just go to the website and watch them. Also, this information is for uh, educational purposes only. It is not personal, financial, accounting, or legal advice. Uh, everybody's situations are different, and before we render any legal advice, we must establish that relationship with you and discuss your uh, needs specifically. Uh, so this is for your own education to make you better and stronger business owners and uh, more successful. Okay, I've been an attorney for 19 years, created over 500 business entities, uh, worked with over 700 clients, been a real estate investor, a real estate agent, currently a title and escrow officer, uh, entrepreneur, consultant, educator, published author, athlete, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you, have, you ever want to know about me, just, just ask. Uh, our office, we do a lot of entity formation and asset protection packages. Uh, again, we are not an online form generator. We uh, customize everything we do to the needs of our clients. Uh, we also do some estate planning, title and escrow services, uh, business and real estate transactional documents, consulting, fiduciary services, and lots and lots and lots of education, which is what you're watching now. Uh, some of our education is in classes and some of it's on uh, webinars, uh, and it's generally all available uh, online on our website, so feel free to check out uh, our education courses page, uh, 20 or 30 hours of education there. Okay. Your LLC paperwork. This is what you're going to get from us in the mail uh, after we set up your LLC. Uh, you're going to get a certificate of organization. This is the document that is filed with the state. It is public record. It, it establishes your LLC legally under state law. Uh, you'll notice a few unusual things about the certificate of organization. Uh, one, it's not going to have your name on it. Okay? We do things to keep our clients privacy. Um, and so you won't see your name on the certificate of organization. Now this can confuse your bank when you go to set up a bank account and it can confuse your title company um, because they're used to seeing the owners of the LLC's name on the certificate of organization, which used to be called, by the way, articles of organization. Uh, but in two, January of 2014, they changed the name. It's now called a certificate, not article. So you'll get a certificate of organization. So you will need to explain to your bank uh, that this is now called a certificate, not articles, in case they're not aware of that. And because these are filed by a uh, law office, uh, they are private. That is why your name is not on there. Um, and so you will need to show them additional documents, and we'll talk about that in the operating agreement, uh, to show you as the owner. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, EIN, this is the tax identification number for your LLC. Your bank will need it to give you a bank account. Uh, you will get an operating agreement. This is the big legal document. This is the document that creates your liability protection. It's kind of like the constitution of the company. It's, it's how your company is to be run. So you do need to understand what's in that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, you'll also get some additional forms. Uh, you'll have a first organizational meeting uh, minutes form. Uh, this is uh, a Essentially, you're supposed to have, as soon as you set up an LLC, first organizational meeting. Uh, this form is kind of uh, basic and, and standard for that meeting. You can add things to it if you need to um, and sign it and uh, keep it with your documents so that you have jumped through that hoop of having your first organizational meeting. And uh, also, our office does consulting where we help you hold meetings and take minutes for you. So just ask about some of our consulting packages to help you run your company. You'll get a single manager or slash member authorization form. This is an event that you need to do title work because most title companies will want to know that if it's member managed, all members must sign title documents. So if you do have a member managed company and see our video on um, management uh, to get that information, but if it's member managed, you all the members must sign title documents. And so this form you can fill out and will allow one member to sign on all other members' behalfs. Um, and so that can make it title work, you know, going to closings much easier. Or if it's manager managed, um, the way our documents are always set up, just so that you know, um, the operating agreement states that any single manager can and has the authority to sign closing documents uh, on behalf of all the managers if there are multiple managers. 
So you can take in your operating agreement and show them that clause in there. Or you can, if they're confused, you can take in this form. It lists all the managers and it says that this one manager has the authority to sign on behalf of all of them. So it's really, that form is really just to appease your title company uh, so that they know that one of you can sign on behalf of everybody. You may never need it, um, especially if you're just a single member LLC and you're the only person and you won't need it. Um, and then there's the appointment of manager form. This will be used to add another manager that you, you know, in case you uh, want to do that. Uh, so those are just, uh, just in case you, you need those, but they're there if you, if you do. Okay. The most important thing we're going to talk about is the operating agreement. This is the true legal document establishing your company and its liability protection. Without it, all you have is a name. Uh, so if you're watching this video and you set up an LLC yourself online or at the state and you've got your certificate of organization and you don't have this, just remember that you have no liability protection. Uh, all you have is a name to conduct business under. And so you really, really want to get this operating agreement done. Uh, please read the entire document. Uh, you are signing a legal document and you should understand its content. Uh, and so please read through the whole thing. Take a few minutes. I know it's a lot of legal uh, mumbo jumbo, but it is important mumbo jumbo. So please read through it. We're going to talk about some of the more important things in this video, but definitely read through the whole thing. Uh, you must also sign the last page. This is Article 9 of our documents called the Signature and Membership Interest Page. This We keep this on a separate page. Uh, and the reason we do so is if you need to prove ownership or management, uh, you can take in this single page to the bank or to a title company to prove that you are an owner of the company or that you are the manager of the company. Uh, you do not need to bring in your entire operating agreement. That is really a private document and you can keep it private. And so if you need to prove ownership, you can just use this last page. Because uh, remember, your name is not on the certificate of organization. And so you will need to prove to your bank to get a bank account, to a title company to do closings, uh, or to possible others, you know, that you are a true owner of this company and you can just show them that final page and that is the page that you sign. Okay, uh, that's very, very important. Okay, Articles 1 and 2 are just some general information uh, about the company and definitions of terms. Uh, Article 3 defines the members, meetings of the members, transfer of membership interest, and this is kind of important. Uh, the documents we create, uh, create prohibit transfers of membership. This is done uh, to protect you, really. Um, if you have a single member LLC, it doesn't matter. But if you have multiple members, you don't want one of those members transferring their membership to somebody else uh, because then suddenly you're in a partnership with somebody you didn't want to be in, the part in a partnership with in the first place. So it is prohibited to transfer your membership. You can't do it unless you amend uh, the operating agreement. Um, so there are, th there are two exceptions that are in there. Um, if you do a buy-sell agreement, this is an additional document that we can create uh, for multi-member LLCs, kind of partnerships, uh, that dictate what's to happen if somebody wants to transfer their membership interest, uh, or if there is a member who becomes a debtor and is being sued by creditors for money. It talks about how those creditors come in and they come in in a way that protects the asset and protects the management. So really all they do is sort of get revenue streams from the debtor's uh, position and not uh, any managerial say. So it's really for your protection. Um, so just kind of be aware that you cannot change members of this company in, in, except in those two situations uh, unless you amend the operating agreement. So if you do want to change ownership of the company, which we can do, just give us a call at the office and we will create an amendment to the operating agreement, uh, changing the memberships. Uh, and sometimes people change ownership of the LLC to a family limited partnership. Sometimes they change it to a family trust. Uh, sometimes they create a holding company. So there's lots of reasons why you may want to change ownerships. And that's great. We can do that. But it must be done by amendment, which requires member approval and a separate document. And again, I, this sounds like a maybe a little more hoop jumping that you may, you know, you don't want, but it protects you. That's why we do it. Again, our, our documents are designed for your protection from our experience of what protects you. Um, so sometimes it may not be the easiest way to do things, but it is, we're looking out for you and that's our job. Um, Article 3 also discuss, discusses the charging order protection. If you have multiple members, uh, we maximize that out. We make it as strong as possible. 
Uh, it has indemnity uh, clauses that if uh, you are sued as an individual, which you shouldn't be, but if you are, the company will indemnify you and pay for your legal bills and costs. Um, and a number of other liability uh, protection clauses and privacy clauses. Because uh, again, our, our documents are custom and they are meant to uh, accommodate our clients and what they're looking for. Uh, Article 4 discusses finances of the company, contributions, distributions, profits and losses, etc. Um, on our standard LLC, this is always by percentage interest, um, percentage membership interest, I should say. Uh, a contribution is any time you need to put money into the company and a distribution is any time you take money out of the company, like profits. Uh, this, how you do this will depend on whether you are S elected or not. Uh, and typically all contributions must be made according to percentage interest. So if the company needs money and there's multiple members, each member needs to put in money uh, in, according to the percentage interest. Uh, it does talk about capital accounts. A, a capital account is nothing more, it's not a bank account. So it's nothing at your bank. It is a bookkeeping thing. And it is a, it keeps track of how much each member puts in and takes out. Uh, your accountant and your bookkeeper can certainly help you with this, but it really is just that. It is a, a listing and a keeping track of uh, how much money each member puts in and takes out, uh, and your accountant will need that. Discusses loans. Uh, you can make a loan to the company as opposed to a contribution. Typically, we suggest contributions. If the company needs money, just make a contribution. But you can loan your LLC money and charge an interest rate, but the, remember those loan documents must be arm's length, market terms, in writing, legally signed by the appropriate parties. If you are going to do a loan to your uh, your business, uh, maybe give us a call and we'll create those loan documents for you so that you know that they are appropriate. Uh, you definitely don't want to do a special no interest loan or something a little shady or not get the proper signatures because then you could be considered commingling funds or or embezzling money uh, or providing benefits that you're not supposed to be providing. So it is a kind of a, a, a big deal for liability issues. Uh, just make sure you do it correctly or call our office. Okay, Article defi 5 defines the management. Okay, whether you are member managed or manager managed. Please see that video on management to uh, understand this. Uh, so most of that will be ex explained there. Uh, if it's member managed, Members do everything. You're always a member, regardless of what you're doing. Uh, member meetings, big meetings, big decisions, small decisions, daily work, it's always as a member. But since most of our companies are manager managed, uh, our operating agreements state that managers can do, can do just about anything. That is, they do all the day-to-day -day operations. They can sign title documents. They can uh, buy and sell property. They can sign lease agreements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, th uh, the five things they cannot do is merge with another company, which most of you probably won't be doing anyways. Um, membership transfer, so managers cannot authorize uh, the transfer of memberships. Uh, only the members can do that by amending the operating agreement. We talked about that. Uh, filing for bankruptcy, managers can't do that. That takes the members. Uh, adding new members, again, managers can't do that. That must be voted on by the, by the members of the company by way of amendment. Uh, and appoint and remove managers. Uh, so again, the managers are appointed or removed by the actual members or owners of the company. So if you have a manager managed company, you will do pretty much everything as the manager except for those things. Uh, and if you do any of those things, then remember you're acting as a member slash owner of the company and sign appropriately. Uh, in our operating agreements, uh, and this is specific to ours, you may not get this if you had other attorneys set up your uh, operating agreement who don't understand real estate investment work, uh, managers can buy and sell real property. So you do have that authorization, so you don't need member approval to do that. Uh, that would inhibit uh, our clients, and if they didn't get that member approval and they signed as the manager, that could be um, essentially an, an, an unauthorized transaction and cause problems. So our operating agreements allow managers to buy and sell real property. If you have multiple managers, uh, remember you, uh, you already have single authorization by our operating agreement. You already can sign those title documents on behalf of the company. Um, and so but be aware of that. If you have two managers, um, either one can sign. So you do need to be aware of that. Uh, and if your title company doesn't quite get that, you can use that single member or single manager authorization form. Uh, so Article 5 is a big deal. Um, it is an important section. 
Uh, so please read through that carefully and um, let us know if you have any further questions on that. Um, article 6 is record keeping and Article 7 is dissolution, ways your company can be dissolved. Uh, that's pretty general boilerplate kind of stuff. Uh, Article 8 is more general terms, including dispute resolution. Uh, so by our operating agreement, if you have uh, partners in it, uh, you must go to mediation and arbitration before you go to litigation. Uh, so be aware of that, that you uh, are obligated for that. And then Article 9 is that separate page. It is the signature page. Please sign that page as soon as you get your documents. Okay, uh, that's pretty much the operating agreement. Um, so now we're going to talk about how you sign documents. Um, it depends on the management structure, we've explained that, and it depends on your role, whether you're a member or a manager. Day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operations uh, are one thing and member meetings are another. So remember, day-to-day -day is done by whoever is defined as the manager. If you're manager managed, then the managers will conduct day-to-day -day business. If you're member managed, the members will conduct day-to-day -day business. Member meetings are always members, right? It's called a member meeting. So it's obviously a meeting of the members. And so you will always act as a member in those meetings. And that's the bigger decisions the company might make. Okay, here are examples of signature lines. Um, and remember, this is very, very important. And you should always sign documents like this. So if you're acting as a member, you'll sign, you'll say by your name, comma, member. That's your title and then for the name of the LLC, okay? So you are acting as a member or manager on behalf of the LLC, because it's the LLC that's conducting business. It's the LLC that's signing that lease agreement. It's the LLC that's signing that contract. It's the LLC that's buying and selling properties, not you as an individual. So when you sign, sign your name with the appropriate title for the name of the LLC. Okay, and if you're the manager, just put your title as manager. Um, make sure your title companies know this. Um, you're on your lease agreements, make sure you do this. Um, you should always, I always prefer that you write in for then the name of the LLC. If the document is very, very clear, like a lease agreement, where on the landlord line, you put Happy Days LLC. Obviously, that's the landlord. And when you sign, you can sign your name, comma, manager, and don't necessarily have to put for Happy Days LLC because the contract's already in the name of the LLC. But make sure you always put the word manager, even if you sign it, even if you don't print this out, you know, and sign above it. When you sign your name, sign your name, comma, and then sign the word manager or member. Uh, so you always, 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 always sign or print your title on everything you do on behalf of the LLC. Never, 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 never use just your name. Hopefully I made that very, very clear because most of you are not doing this correctly. Always sign as your representative management of the company. You're always signing on behalf of the company in your titled role. Okay, uh, good, now you know that and now you'll do it correctly. Okay, those are your LLC documents. Um, if you have any further questions or details uh, about those, just give us the office a call. We'll be happy to explain them, but that should give you a good idea uh, about what's going on. Uh, and uh, hope you uh, are very successful in your business. And if there's anything further we can do, please give us a call at 801-560-2180.